everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. I have got so many requests from you guys to show you how to make lace angels. You guys want to make them to put them on your Christmas trees this coming season. I'm just going to run through one really quick. You will not believe how incredibly simple this is to make. You don't have to have a huge hoop. It helps if you want to make multiples. I'm making a whole bunch for a group that I belong to and I will put one at everybody's place at Christmas when we have our luncheon. But these are just so simple to do. The design I'm using is from Designs by Juju and it is part of the Christmas lace set that she has. I will link to everything below and I am making the three inch lace angel. I'll put two of them in the hoop to show you how they can fit. So I have a five by seven hoop here and I'm gonna do it on a single needle machine. The only special thing you need for this is something called a fibrous water soluble stabilizer. There's a lot of different types of water soluble stabilizer. There are some called a topper and a topper is designed to go on top of something that has nap, like a towel or uh, maybe a thick hoodie or something like that, maybe a sweatshirt, you would want to use this topper. It feels like Glad Press and Seal is what it feels like. It's very flimsy, lightweight, and this is not what you want to use for freestanding lace. Freestanding lace has to have something with a lot of uh, stability to it that's going to hold up to a lot of uh, punctures from the embroidery machine. Another one that you can use, these are both, both of these are sulky products. There's another one they make and it is like a heavy plastic. Very, very tough, okay? This is not what you want either. With the amount of punctures that are going to happen in freestanding lace from the needle, it would just fall apart as it continued to sew. It would just puncture a hole in it and create all kinds of perforations. So this is not what you want either. What you want is called fibrous water soluble stabilizer. And this is what it looks like. It's opaque and it feels like interfacing. It's not sticky at all until you get it wet, then it gets real gooey, but it's, it's very strong and it feels like fabric almost. You can get them from Sulky makes them, OESD makes, uh, has a brand. I will link to all of that below. If you are um, in Walmart, Pellon's 541 Wash and Gone, this is on the stabilizer wall at Walmart and it runs about $6 for a package of it. So this works really well. You need two layers in order to make it work. So I normally will uh, roll it out and fold it in half. I take my hoop with the handle side to the outside and just uh, make sure I've got enough to make sure everything is hooped just fine and then I cut it. I got a very fancy measuring system there. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to put this in the hoop. Make sure I've got this right side up. Not that it matters in this one. And put it in and do it pretty tight. Now there is a trick to making sure that your stabilizer stays nice and tight. You can recess it just a tiny bit in the hoop. You can also use what are called T-pins. T-pins are very strong. Let me get close so you can see what I'm talking about. See these? These are called T-pins. Okay, it, you, can, you find them everywhere, all right? But they're very strong. What you can do is take a T-pin and put it right in the crevice between the inner and outer hoop. And when you do that, and it can go in and come back up and out, out or whatever, but what it is is the T, the head of the T, prevents the stabilizer from being pulled down inside the hoop. It's a very cool trick if you're ever going to be making freestanding lace or patches, anything that's going to have a real dense satin or heavily stitched design. This is a trick that I've learned over time that will prevent that T head prevents the stabilizer from pulling down in. 
and you will get a beautiful stitch out. Oh, here's my fourth one right here. I just push it in there just like this. It works great, you guys. You'd be surprised how much better of a stitch out you'll get if your stabilizer cannot be pulled down inside of the hoop. You don't have to have these pins. It's just handy if you do. But I'm going to go ahead and put these in along the sides and along the top of the hoop. And that's going to keep that very taut. If you are doing the stitching and you start seeing heavy drag lines in your stabilizer, that's where you need to kind of be careful because what can happen is if the stabilizer is being pulled in from the pull compensation that's happening with all the stitching, your design can get distorted. So just make sure you are very tightly hooped. Put my little brother screwdriver on here and it's very helpful to have T-pins in the sides of your hoop. So let's go to the machine. I'm going to show you how simple this is. The only thing you really need to make sure of when you start this is that your top thread, I'm using white, and your bobbin are the same color. That's it. I have a 7511 needle. I'm using a 90 weight bobbin thread, so it's pretty lightweight. I need to thread my needle. And here at the machine, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna pull it up. I go to embroidery. It says it's gonna move the carriage. I sent it over wirelessly, so I'm gonna hit the pocket for memory and the wireless button. And let me scroll looking for my angel. There it is, right there. And set. I need to delete that image from the back. Hold on just one second. I'm gonna touch my, I think that's on page, right here, 10, background image, delete. Okay, okay, there we go. There she is. I don't have to do anything to this. It's gonna take 18 minutes to stitch out. I am going to tell the machine that I'm using a five by seven hoop, although it will know that when I put it in. It has a sensor. Let me go into my settings and uh, tell it frame size and I have a five by seven. Tell it okay. So that gives me an image on the screen of what size it is. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. And if I wanted to, if you wanted to do two at a time, I can say add and go back to my memory. I sent it wirelessly and there it is and set. And then just pull it and move it up. That easy, just like that. So now I can do two at a time in the hoop. I don't want to do two at a time because that will take forever to stitch out. Each one is going to take 18 minutes. So the one that's highlighted, I'm just going to hit delete and tell it okay. And I'm going to put this back in the middle. And if you notice, it does not matter where I put it on my screen because it doesn't matter where it stitches in the hoop. There's nothing to match up. It, it just is going to stitch wherever I put it which is great. And if you just put it in the center and hit go, you're good to go. So I'm going to hit embroidery and the hoop moved a little bit, which is fine. But now look at my machine. My button is turned green and I'm finished. So I'm just going to hit the button and it's going to start stitching and it's going to take 18 minutes to stitch this out. See, it just starts and there's nothing to this at all when it gets done stitching I'll uh, I'll meet you back here as you can see here I have not slowed my machine down at all I've just let it go at its default setting for speed
finished. It looks amazing. Front and back. See how there's no drag lines at all in this? And that's because I used the T-pins. If you don't use T-pins, you'll get drag lines. That doesn't mean you have to use T-pins. I just recommend it. This was so stitch intense. And you just get a much cleaner stitch out. I am going to very carefully trim away the angel. Don't catch the stitching at all. You want to cut away as much of the stabilizer, a lot of it. You really want to cut that away. That's less gummy that you're going to get. So this is fine to do it like this. And then I have a bowl of warm water right here and a towel. So you just want to take the angel and drop it into some warm water. And it will instantly just, everything will come out of it. All of the stabilizer, you'll see it just melt away. It, it's not as effective in cold water. If, if you do it through at the sink, you run the risk of distortion of the stitches. So I recommend just putting it into water. I've got a couple of little threads here from the back and that's fine. Your fingers will be kind of gluey. Whatever you're working on, you just want to take a stiletto and just kind of reshape everything. Make sure that the hole is open. And I like to dry my uh, freestanding lace face down. It has a tendency to want to curl in. And so if you dry it, if you dry it face down, it will, uh, it will be straighter. Don't trim these little threads yet. Now see that? Make sure that your little head is shaped correctly. That's, you just use your stiletto and just get in there and just make sure it's all right. And these can be trimmed later. Don't trim them now. And just lay it flat. And you would want to take your stiletto if you made the snowflake and anything's a little wobbly because whatever reason from the water, just reshape, make sure everything is fine and leave it sit like this. I need to open that up a little bit. That looks better. And just leave it to, to dry overnight and it will be beautiful and nice and stiff in the morning and then you can trim these extra little trim tails. So that's it you guys, that's how easy it is to make Designs by Juju's Lace Angels. They're a lot of fun and they're super simple. I hope you give them a try. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.